What's up guys, it's Will back again, and today's review is episode 8 of the Star Wars saga, The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi, directed by Ryan Johnson, takes place not long after the events of The Force Awakens, where Rey finds herself on a remote island trying to convince Luke Skywalker to aid the desperate resistance in their fight against the First Order. Rey also desires to be trained as a Jedi by Luke, but he's hesitant because of her raw strength and his past as a teacher. Meanwhile, the resistance is attempting to fight off the First Order, and the rest of the film is spent watching the two sides battle it out in a tug of war for the future of the galaxy. All right, so you guys know that I was pretty hyped for this movie. I mean, who isn't? It's Star Wars we're talking about here. I mean, I went into the theater in my full Kylo Ren costume just because I love Star Wars so much. I ended up on the news and I took a bunch of photos, so that was cool, but man, I gotta be honest, it was really hot in that theater with all the layers on. Either way though, I really enjoyed The Last Jedi. I don't think it's a perfect film. There are a few things here and there that I do have some issues with, but ultimately I think it will prove to be a very satisfying satisfying installment for the vast majority of audiences, huge Star Wars fans or not. Let's start with the positives. Well, first off, the movie looks amazing. The CGI obviously looks great, but I was actually really impressed with the cinematography in this one. I thought The Force Awakens was also really well shot too, and The Last Jedi definitely follows suit. I think this is one of the better shot fantasy or sci-fi films that I've seen in a while, which is definitely an important consideration and an important achievement. Second, I mostly liked how they developed the characters. I felt like most of the main characters really grew over the course of the film, and that's exactly exactly what the majority of Star Wars fans are looking for. Of course we're looking for excitement and entertainment, but we're also looking for deep and meaningful connections to rich characters in the Star Wars universe, and that's definitely what The Last Jedi delivers. I think The Force Awakens better develop the characters a little deeper, a little more meaningfully, but I don't think The Last Jedi does a bad job at it by any means. To no one's surprise, this film has an Empire Strikes Back feel and tone to it. In that film, just like this one, the characters are spread out a little bit more, and their paths don't directly cross as much as they did in The Force Awakens. Because of that, you spend more time with each of them separately, and they're developed differently than they were in Episode 7. They also take the characters in directions that you're more than likely not going to expect. You're more than likely not going to see every twist coming, and there are several of them, and they do a good job keeping you on your toes. That's kind of what they're meant for. There's something to be said for that, because generally people have come to expect a certain formula from Star Wars films. There's generally a methodology and a consistency across all of them, and those are definitely still there there, those things are still there, but they occasionally subvert those expectations. They take sharp left turns and surprise you in key moments. I mostly enjoyed that. Speaking of key moments, The Last Jedi has a handful of scenes that will become instant Star Wars classics. You know what I mean, like the Vader scene in Rogue One, or the I Am Your Father scene back in Empire Strikes Back. Scenes that will stick with people for a long time because of how exciting and how memorable they are. Scenes that you watch over and over again on YouTube, in other words. The Last Jedi is a very exciting movie, a very entertaining movie for the the majority of it. The first half I was satisfied with, not blown away by, maybe slightly underwhelmed with based on the huge expectations I had going in, but the second half was everything I hoped it would be. That is one of the reasons I prefer The Force Awakens, because I felt like it was a very even, very consistent experience, where The Last Jedi tends to be a little unbalanced and a little uneven. But here's just kind of a PSA here. If you're in the theater and you're about an hour in and you're starting to feel a little underwhelmed, don't panic. The second half of this film is some of the best Star Wars content I've seen period. I was locked into my seat because the second half is an absolute thrill ride that never takes its foot off the accelerator. It's not like the first half isn't entertaining, it is, but with the ridiculously high expectations The Last Jedi has, it felt just slightly underwhelming. The second half though has everything you're looking for. It has surprises, excitement, drama, and even comedy. Well to be fair, comedy is sprinkled in along the way at various points, including the first half, and it does a decent enough job overall. Sometimes it gets a little too cute for its own good, like you know, Know, kind of overdoes it, but generally The Last Jedi has sort of a Marvel feel to it comedy wise. Old Marvel though, not new Marvel where like they crack a joke every 10 seconds. That doesn't really happen here. Let's talk about the main characters a little bit more. So I mentioned that I like the development for most of the main characters, most of them. I do feel like one character specifically gets left out in the cold just a tad and that's Finn. Finn doesn't have zero development, but I felt like his growth as a character was lesser compared to the other main characters. I felt like everyone else changed and matured, but Finn didn't really feel like he changed all that much. Just my take. But I think the biggest character change comes from Luke. This is not a Luke Skywalker we've seen before, and that's going to be something you either really like or really hate. I liked it because it felt like I was seeing something for the first time, seeing an iconic legend broken and conflicted in ways that we've never seen from his character before. Luke is in a very different place in The Last Jedi 
Jedi than he was in any of the films from the original trilogy. He's more conflicted and more troubled than he's ever been. And that's really a sad but interesting take on this character. Mark Hamill really does own it though. I think that this is his best performance as Luke thus far because he had to dig a little bit deeper and deliver a version of Luke that's very different than what we're used to. I think Mark Hamill was pretty damn awesome in this film because his performance added so much weight to Luke as a character in unexpected ways, which was great. He may have disagreed on the direction, but he sure did deliver a great performance regardless. So you know I wasn't letting you guys off the hook without hearing about Kylo Ren, my favorite Star Wars character. I'll say this, I like the direction they take him in in The Last Jedi, but I feel like he had a more consistent, more well-rounded development arc in The Force Awakens. There's definitely things he does in this film that will surprise you in good and bad ways, but I felt like he was a slightly more interesting character in Episode 7. It may have been because there was a lot of mystery surrounding him until he removed his helmet, but I think it's more that he was just a little bit more versatile in 7. In 8, the internal conflict is still there, and the sympathetic villain aspect is still there as well, and those are elements that are explored well, but I just found them to be explored a little bit more effectively in 7. Still good, still my favorite character, but better in 7. Not Adam Driver's fault though. He was great, just more so the writing. As for Rey, same deal. I think Daisy Ridley does a really nice job, but I found her character to be a little more dynamic in Episode 7. There's certain things that are touched on, but never fully explored with Rey. I won't go into them because I don't want to spoil even the smallest of events for you, but I'll just say that Rey is still an awesome character. She also has an internal conflict like Kylo does, and that connects them in a weird way. Rey is similarly motivated to prove herself and her worth because of her backstory, which is touched on in more detail this time around. Someone else who did really well here was Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher delivered her best performance as Leia here because she too was asked to portray a different version of the character than we've seen before. Not as drastically different as Luke, but still different. She takes on a bigger and more active role than she did in 7, although they made it really kind of feel like an emphasis to kind of thrust her into the spotlight, and that worked really, really well. She was great, and she will sorely be missed. Something else you probably want to know about is the action. I already mentioned that the film looks great, but the action is spectacular. I mentioned that there's a few instantly classic Star Wars scenes, and those are all action scenes, obviously. I rarely get goosebumps in a live theater experience like that, but I did here because it's just so damn exciting and so well executed that it's just, you know, emotional and hard not to get excited about it. There's one scene in particular that I honestly wish we got more of, but it's one of my favorite Star Wars scenes ever. Just wait till you see it, you're gonna love it. All right, so as for some things I didn't quite love. I mentioned the humor before and how sometimes the film tends to get a little too cute. I get why they did this. Star Wars is a family experience too, something for everyone, but there were a few instances where it didn't feel like it fit in the specific scene it was thrust into. There's pivotal moments where the emotion needed to sink in just a bit more and then you get some humor. Didn't always love that. I mentioned the first half earlier too. I think my problems with the first half lie in the fact that it feels scattered. It feels like there's a lot going on but not a lot meaningful happening. It sort of felt anticlimactic in a way because I expected more excitement and more development than what actually took place. It sort of felt like they were buying time and preparing for the second half sprint. The first half is a brisk walk. The second half is like a hundred meter sprint. So prepare yourself for that unbalance. I also think there's a couple moments, one in particular that either feels anticlimactic or silly, and these are big moments, not tiny ones. These scenes are pivotal for certain characters, and I feel like the film sort of sacrificed well-rounded storytelling for unpredictability, and that just diminished my experience just a little bit. So yeah, just a few small things, but overall, I really enjoyed The Last Jedi. Not quite as good as The Force Awakens, but still a really great time overall. I thought it had excellent characters and acting, beautiful visuals, iconic action, and an unpredictability factor. As for the cons, I think they missed the target on a couple key scenes, the first half felt a tad underwhelming, and the humor was at times just a bit much. Honestly though, the humor thing is very minor. Regardless, I'm gonna give Star Wars The Last Jedi a 9 out of 10, and recommend you check this one out in theaters if you're a huge Star Wars fan or not. There's something for everyone here. So did you guys see Star Wars The Last Jedi yet? What did you think of it? And if not, let me know why not. And also let me know your favorite Star Wars film. I'm still on board The Force Awakens train, but let me know your thoughts. That's all for now though. This is Wolfoxification signing off. See you in the next video.